Hello, my name is Chris Roberts, the host of The Long Road. I'm here today with the United States Department of Health and Human Service Regional Director. Christy Hager. And you're in here, Keen, to um, award Keen to celebrate Keen's kids' programs? We're here to celebrate with Keen the first year anniversary of First Lady Michelle Obama's initiative, Let's Move, which is a program designed to prevent uh, and address the issues of childhood overweight and obesity and community health and healthy nutrition and physical activity among kids. And we're really proud to have you here because Keen, with our 2020 program from Cheshire Medical Center, our activities, our recreation, we really think health is really important. It's, it's very clear um, from what we've seen here, and I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of the folks uh, who work on those initiatives here. Um, you have a lot to be proud of here in Keene between the programs here at this community center and with your community partners related to uh, promoting the health and well-being of children and their parents. Um, this is a really wonderful place for us to get to be to celebrate this, this type of work. And as we were talking before off camera, it doesn't cost a lot of money. If the community gets involved, it doesn't take a lot of money to have benefits. That's right. It really comes down to commitment at the community level, at, uh, among the leaders in this community, and with your, all of your community partners and your residents. And really, the whole principle behind public health and preventive health and keeping people well before they get sick um, is all about um, uh, protecting resources and saving resources. And when you're talking about protecting resources and prevention, one of the biggest costs in health care could be prevented. That's Diabetes, right. heart attacks, all those are really inactivity type illnesses. That's right. We have evidence to show the, uh, the value of prevention of these types of activities and uh, efforts to reduce obesity and overweight to prevent chronic illnesses that can cause a lot of um, not just suffering, but expensive health care later on. And being on the school board and parents are saying, well, how is that, the school budget going higher and higher? Well, the ever-increasing number of children with childhood diabetes. Every time a child gets diabetes, we have to hire someone to ensure that all that medication is given properly during the day. Yeah, and, and with the, the state of the evidence that we have with the um, the ability of uh, physical activity and proper nutrition and um, attentive uh, um, systems for addressing preventive health services. Um, there's really no need for children to, to suffer um, illnesses like high blood pressure and diabetes and, um, and even asthma. The, um, when I was growing up as a kid, everybody wanted to earn John F. Kennedy's award. And really, until Michelle Obama, we had a couple of generations of kids. There was no, ef no effort whatsoever to challenge the kids to be athletic. The Let's Move initiative is an opportunity for partnership across um, not just uh, the uh, divisions of the Health and Human Services Department, but across the federal government. And the President's um, Council on Fitness and uh, active lifestyles are um, very active entities too as well and, and partners with communities. So we see the ability within just the Department of Health and, and, and Human Services to uh, work with our partners in the states and in communities to address um, community services and supports for children um, related to nutrition, related to health services. And this is also an opportunity, which we'll see today at our event, um, a partnership across other fe federal departments, the Department of the U.S. Department of Transportation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the U.S. Department of Ag Agriculture are all going to be here standing with me from Health and Human Services to celebrate this. You, you just hit on two other things that are really important. We, we're, we're developing a farmer's market. We have one. We're doing a food co-op. And on the school board, we're making effort to go buy local fruits. We've cleaned out the school of junk food. Kids can't even sell candy to raise money anymore. Some of the parents are upset. But we've got a couple of federal and state grants because safe pathways to school. We want right. kids riding their bike, walking to school. That's right. That's it, right. This is not just about healthy behaviors. Uh, this is about resources in the community to support that, to, su to reduce violence, and to um, support safe um, moving around the community. And um, that, that's all part of the same efforts. And Keene is a wonderful example of a community that has really come together 
um, all facets of the community. Because we had one, I can't remember which federal organization gave us a grant. We built um, a basketball court and it runs all night. It has a timer to turn off, but you have all kinds of kids. But if you go down there, there's no damage, mm -hmm. there's no graffiti, and you look at a bunch of kids, people would automatically say, oh, those kids are troublemakers. But you put them on there, they're playing, they're active, they're not causing trouble. They're not getting, not causing crime. Yeah, so much of this is about presenting options and opportunities for activities and for engagement and for interaction with one another. And uh, this community center and that program and, um, and similar ones are all examples of how those types of opportunities can really benefit uh, the children and all the community members. I know you're, you're busy and you're going to have to go, but I'm going to try bring up two, two things. There was a bunch of research, we're talking about children with attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. And some of the research, and I go, two 15 minutes of green does wonders for the kids. Getting them out of the classroom, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, has shown tremendous progress without drugs. That's great. That's absolutely great. And that's absolutely related to the kinds of efforts we're talking about here today. Um, the opportunity to get moving, to get outside. Um, physical activity is just as much um, a important uh, prevention uh, for illness as other types of healthy behaviors, eating right and making sure you get your annual checkups. And the last one is we're talking about kids, but it has an effect on the parents. Right. My grandkids come and say, well, Papa, that's not healthy. And oh, I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to do this. Papa, let's go get up. I want to go out and walk. I want to ride my bike. So family members, adults are now connecting with the kids, spending quality time with the kids instead of sitting on TV at the sofa watching TV or playing a video game. That's right, and learning from our children. As the mother of a three-year-old um, who will grow up never knowing cars that don't have seat belts yep. um, and never knowing uh, what healthy options are for food. And so I want to thank you, and again, we're proud of the fact that you picked us. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Thank you. Thanks.
great way to kick off our uh, Let's Move celebration with the Keen High Terp dancers. Let's give them a round of applause. I hope you've come to learn, be inspired, and share, and become involved with the Let's Move initiative. And at this time, I would like to introduce and welcome the Honorable Mayor Dale Pregen. But I just want to tell you how surprised I was about three weeks ago when Christy called me. And I was just so pleased that she had called me to talk about Let's Move. And you know, Keene is well known for its leadership throughout the community. And that's how Christy and I met. We met at a 2020 meeting, we talked, and she called me and said that with what we do in this community and how it comes together in every phase that we do, and she was so pleased that it was one of the reasons that Keene was picked. I thank you so much for that, Christy. You know, it is an honor for everybody here. It's an honor for the city, for this wonderful ward. And I can't tell you how I could be any more proud than I am that you've asked us to be the representative for Let's Move for all of New England. So today, enjoy the day. I thank you, Christy, and I thank everybody for being here. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to welcome back to the City of Keene, Region 1 Director of U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Christy Hager. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it really is a privilege for us to be here today. As the mayor um, mentioned, I'm the d regional director for the New England region of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm pleased to be joined here today by my colleague, uh, Rear Admiral Mike Milner, who is the regional health administrator in the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health of Health and Human Services. Um, thank you to all of you. Thank you to the elected officials and um, all of the wonderful residents and partners who are here today. Um, we are here to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the Let's Move initiative, which was begun about a year ago by First Lady Michelle Obama with the goal of reducing childhood overweight and obesity and in a generation and in turn preventing the illnesses that we know are caused by childhood obesity and overweight, including high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma. We know what to do. Um, it involves presenting and educating and preserving healthy food options, options for physical activity, and really family and community awareness. When I came here to, to uh, first to meet with uh, Mayor Dale and some of the other community leaders from the, um, from the medical center, from the, the local business community, from uh, Keene State College and others. I was so impressed by the powerful coalition that had already been created here in Keene and the really deep commitment and significant investment in improving community health um, for generations to come. It was natural that Keene would be a community that would become a member of the Let's Move initiative. It's a, this initiative over the last year has built, um, grown to nearly 500 cities and towns throughout the United States. Um, celebrating this anniversary is a very important milestone. Um, a lot of work has been done in the past year uh, on the Let's Move program. A lot of partnerships have been built. Uh, on a larger scale of what we see here in, in the community of Keene. But it really starts at the community level. And the leadership of Mayor Dale is um, uh, no coincidence that there is such a strong commitment here in Keene. And you'll also notice I'm joined here by colleagues from other federal departments, the Department, U.S. Department of Transportation, U.S. Department of Education, and U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is a commitment that begins um, at the highest level, at the cabinet level, um, and um, uh, on the part of President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama, and comes right down to the community level. And it is with all of you that we're working on the goals and the pillars of the Let's Move program. Lots more information about Let's Move. I'll put in a plug for the website, letsmove.gov. Um, you'll see information um, uh, soon, more about Keen on that website too. Um, but I also want to encourage you and um, to, to congratulate you on the commitment you've all shown to your community 
And there are similar celebrations taking place uh, this week and, and over the next several days in other cities in the United States, uh, including New York City, who's celebrating in Times Square, Dallas, and Keene is in that company, and you should know um, an important model and example for cities and towns, not just throughout New England, but really the nation and the commitment and the value of community health. And I'm um, really, as I said, honored and privileged to be here today. I'm pleased to be able to work with the mayor and um, other community leaders, not just today, but going forward. Um, I'll be back. I, this is my second time here since I was appointed in April, and um, I assure you I'll be back, good or bad weather. So thank you all. I'm here with Chef. Rich Ducharme from Keene State Dining Services. And um, we got all this different food today. But yes, you know the, you've got the food that all kids hate to eat. No one wants <laughs> to eat green beans. But how did you get people to eat green beans today? Uh, it's true. The ingredient mix is simple. The flavors come from toasted your sesame seeds. Um, we saute them, just a little salt and pepper. Keep the, keep the heat kind of low so they don't burn. And really the youngsters coming through the line were intrigued by it and, and tried it as they came through. I think it's important at this age level to get them because by the time they come to me as customers, their eating habits are already established. So it's nice to see the little kids enjoying fresh food. My grandson was here before and he saw your green beans and it's like, uh, uh. It's true. But you gave him a taste. It's true. And you just opened up his eyes. Yep. He uh, took it and a bunch of other kids took it. It's true. Once they see their friends eating healthy, they'll eat healthy right after them. It's almost a, a clicky trendy thing that they have to see someone else do it before they do it themselves. But and once he did it, he, he had the expression of the day, wide-eyed and happy to have had it, and he had a whole plate. It's true. So you're going to show me how to make it? I will. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Give me about two tablespoons of olive oil right here, about one of those. Yep. Okay, about this? Right, yeah. I'll just have to make sure. Give me sure one my, more little bit. My wife is not watching. She'll probably make me want to cook. That's okay. <laughs> Knowing how to cook is the good part. The, the students and the little kids actually enjoy yep. learning how to do it as well. Oh, here's the guy right here. Here he is. Expression of the day. Come on Come over, here, Christian. What, what, you, he's going to help you show you how to cook those green beans. Did you enjoy your beans today? You were great. You ready? You ready? We're going to go this? sesame seeds. We're going to pour them in there. About enough to fill your hand. Can you do that? Don't fill your hand. Just pour it in the pan. <laughs> Pretend you're filling your yeah. hand. A little more. A little, little, little more. Good. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to let them toast because you got to let them brown just a little bit. See how these are toast, toasted brown, just like light toast in the morning. Let it get hot. So when you came here the first time, you looked at those green beans and you thought they were gross, didn't you? <laughs> they are good, huh? Tell him. <laughs> They were good. And what'd your friends do after you had it? They, they had took, it. They had some too. You were able to get your friends to eat it. The cool kids ate it. Yeah. It's almost time. We gotta let these toast just a little bit. It takes a minute. You know any good jokes? No. Hey, you know the Celtics lost last night. <laughs> what happened to them? And they went against Charlotte and they're a bad team. It's true. You weren't supposed to lose against the Charlotte Hornets. All right, you ready? Are you ready? We're going to take two about like this. Good? Oh, you don't have to get too big, right? You got it. One. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Your two are less littler yeah, than my get... two. Yeah, okay. He's a right. bigger hand. We'll he... live with that. <laughs> Can I have a dollar? As soon as you finish cooking and eat this, I'll give you Hold a dollar. Hold on. You ready? Okay. Pinch of salt and pepper. Just you do it with your finger, right? Get it in there. Pinch. Pinch. Do it again. Pinch. <laughs> yeah. Not only at you, not anybody else. They are shooting at you though, aren't yeah. they? And then bacon? Yeah. It's true, bacon will get you on the arm. Wood stoves are tough too. Look at that yeah. one. You get a gum? And a dollar. Okay. You're going to come back? You come back and I'll give you a dollar. Okay. <laughs> so, pretty much just a light coat of sesame seeds, all of it healthy, um, just two tablespoons of olive oil, about the same amount of sesame seeds, maybe a little bit more for the crunch. So, uh, salt and pepper, just uh, two pinches is great. And the green beans, as many as you can eat. How's that? And they're good. Heat them through and they're fantastic. Ready? I'm ready. You're going to. 
Here, let me get him on the plate for you. Yeah, we gotta be right. I'll just, I'm even gonna use the fork. Not bad. Like it? No, you had good. Them, it's good. Nice and crunchy. It's true. Down here we did cookies. Yep. You moving? Take them. That's the, uh, all you have. Whole wheat flour, carrot, little cinnamon. Really healthy, healthful. The kids all loved them. And we have what ten left out of? Prob yeah, no, there were, yeah, there was uh, 120 or so. So. If you go upstairs, there's none in the trash. There's none. They're all empty. <laughs> they ate them all. They all ate them all. All the kids tried the healthful cookies, and they were happy. Um, so we've showed three or four uh, fresh pasta. Patrick, show them that pasta plate, if you'd be so kind. Little pasta, little fresh lemon juice, whole wheat pasta, uh, feta cheese, salt, pepper again, just a touch, and uh, Swiss chard. None of it cooked, just the, the pasta and served cold, just like that. Nice and simple, easy. Many of those today. And then all the way down. Can we bring a few um, smoothies down here? You got any blueberries? You're a hit. It's all right. We did little smoothie samplers. Um, very healthful roast butternut squash. One with just a hint of blueberry in it. We used uh, local yogurt, Stonyfield yogurt, pureed them, little low-fat milk, and bananas. And that was it. You're trying that one? It's a little more liquid. Them. Smoothies are delicious. Cheers, to, cheers yep. to your health. And the kids enjoyed them too? They the did. The blueberries were better? The blueberry ones, it's true. We had, you can add blueberries or any whole fruit, not any sugared fruits, just any whole sweet fruits. <laughs> the blueberry ones sold about two to one to the regular ones. So. I have a question. Sir. When, I, when I lived out in California, mm -hmm. they had the jumbo juice and they had all, they had all these smoothies. But you go and look at these smoothies, 1,000, 1,200 calories <laughs> in, a, in a smoothie. But not all smoothies are healthy. That is true. Um, we have a lot of success. We mix it up at the college every day with the smoothies we make in the morning for them. The more popular ones are the strawberry daiquiri smoothies and some of the, uh, the sweeter, worse for you. When we do the healthy ones, they move because they're healthy for breakfast and the people that know what they're looking at eat it, but they really, they really clamor for the sugar and the, the process. So you're right. Yeah, because like <clears throat> we, we have a, a, do a local donut company with their, their drink and they're really all sugar. These yep. are quality. Okay. Thanks for your all help. Right. So I want to thank you for being here. Pleasure. The Good kids to meet enjoyed you. it. Awesome. And hopefully we'll run into each other again. I'm sure we will. This time I'd like to welcome from Keene State College Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Mel Etzheimer. Thanks, it's, it's really great to be here today and, and quite an honor. Uh, our President Helen Giles G, well, the weather wreaked havoc on all of us, hasn't it? And so uh, you get me instead, uh, but it's really, uh, I'm very excited to be here and um, Keene State is really pleased to be a part of, of this celebration today. I'm going to talk a little bit about early sprouts for just one second. And I've been at Keene for five years now. And when I arrived in Keene, early sprouts was just a seed. And over the last year, not only have we seen it sprout, but we've seen it flourish in, in our community and make quite a difference. And so it's really quite an honor to be a part of what's happening today. As educators, we know that healthy bodies and healthy minds go together. And we know that the habits we develop at an early age can have a tremendous impact on how we live our lives as we get older. And I've had many opportunities over the past few years to sample the food, to take tours of um, the work that's being done at Early Spouts. And if you haven't tasted the food yet, I would really encourage you to do it. And even more than that, to see the way that uh, our youth participate in preparing food and eating healthy. It's just been extraordinary. We're very proud of the Early Sprouts program at Keene State, and it, it jibes with our, our core values as, as an institution, with the balanced development of mind, body, character, our commitment to civic engagement and civic responsibility, our commitment to stewardship and sustainability, and partnerships that enhance our lives, partnerships with the community. So this is a really rich opportunity for us. 
our director of the program, Carrie Kalich, uh, would have been here today if she hadn't delivered a brand new baby boy last night around 10.30. <laughs> last night. That's over 12 hours ago. I don't know why she <laughs> isn't here today. But it is my great, great pleasure to introduce Lynn Arnold, who is the program coordinator of the Early Sprouts program. Thank you. Uh, I've left work yesterday at 3 o'clock, and there was no sign of labor at that point. Um, so I was really surprised when I found out that Carrie had the baby so soon after that. Uh, so I will be taking care of this myself. Carrie started the program five years ago. It originated at Keene State College and since then has spread throughout New Hampshire and even throughout the country. Um, with the publication of the book, we're hearing from places all around the U.S. that are starting to incorporate the program. The overriding goal of the program is childhood obesity prevention. And traditionally, we didn't worry so much about preschool age kids because the thought was that they could grow out of it or there'd be time to worry about it later on. But with the rates of obesity that we've started to see with this doubling of obesity in the last 30 years of preschool age children, came the realization that we really needed to start paying attention to what was going on with very young children. Um, what is going on with young children is that very few of them are getting the healthy foods that we would like them to be getting. About 1% of preschoolers in this country get the recommended number of servings of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, uh, lean meats, and low-fat dairy products. Um, what they are getting, the other 99%, are diets that are very high in solid fats, sodium, added sugars, and a lot of unhealthy food. And one of the reasons it's important to start with preschool age children is that there's a lot happening around the age of three that really play into this. Um, kids are picking up uh, on a lot of social cues uh, that they hear around healthy and unhealthy foods. When you think about some of the things parents say to kids about vegetables, you can't leave the table till you eat your vegetables, you can't have dessert till you eat your vegetables, a parent might be saying, oh, I'm going to diet, all I can eat is salad. So kids start to see vegetables as being kind of a punishment food. On the other hand, the foods they associate with celebrations, cake at birthday parties, cookies at Christmas, Hall Halloween candy, those messages are that these junky foods are the happy foods, the celebration foods. And the other important piece is that children suffer what we call innate neo food neophobia, which simply means a fear of new foods. Um, and this actually has biological basis, going back to when humans were hunters and gatherers, and children at that age could start to um, look for their own food. But as a lot of you may know, plants that are poisonous tend to have bitter flavors to them. And vegetables have a lot of bitter, bitter flavors. So what we find is that children are actually biologically programmed to be cautious around bitter flavored foods. So the Early Sprouts program is seeking to help children connect to their food supply, finding out where foods come from, and being exposed to foods and getting to know them and then losing that fear of the new foods. We do this through a lot of very hands-on experiences in an environment that becomes very positive within the preschool program. The program is a 24-week curriculum focused on the six target vegetables, green beans, charred carrots, bell peppers, butternut squash, and tomatoes. And you'd think after four years I could do that without <laughs> looking, but I always miss one of them. Um, so we cycle through these six vegetables four times over 24 weeks, and the children really get to know them. The goal is to teach the children about growing the produce, harvesting it, and then what to do with it and to develop a preference for it. We increase children's willingness to taste things as well as their actual liking of the vegetable. And then because at this age, family is so important, the parents are still the primary caregivers. They're the ones that are driving food decisions in the home. Um, we also bring the parents into this through our take-home kits. Um, at this time, I'd like to please help me welcome from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, John Magnarelli. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I'm the regional director for the Northeast region. Our region consists of the six New England states and the state of New York. Uh, as Christy mentioned, there is uh, celebrations going on in a number of cities across the country. So in my region, there's Keene, New Hampshire, and New York City. 
I think I'd rather be in Keene, New Hampshire. <laughs> right? Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture Food Nutrition Service, we administer a number of food assistance programs. It includes the SNAP program, which used to be the food stamp program, the WIC program, uh, supplemental food program for women, infants, and children. Uh, a number of child nutrition programs, which include the school lunch and breakfast programs. I'm sure I have a few customers over here in our school lunch program. We also administer the commodity programs that provide food to soup kitchens and food banks. Our programs touch one in six Americans. We have over 40 million people on the food stamp program. We have 34 million kids every single day eating school lunch. We're part of the Let's Move campaign. First Lady Michelle Obama put a, put a challenge to USDA last year to improve the quality of the school lunch program. Not just to make it taste better, but more importantly, to be more nutritious. We've just proposed, we just um, sent out proposed regulations to improve the school lunch programs, to improve the menus, to improve the meal patterns, to include more fresh fruits and vegetables, to, to include more whole grain, to reduce fat, to reduce sugar, to limit salt, all the things that your early sprout program talked about. We want to do that. We have a challenge going on in the schools across the country called the Healthy U.S. School Challenge. We're looking for schools to implement these regulations and to go beyond because good health is not just nutrition. Good health is also physical activity and nutrition education. So within our program, within the School Lunch Healthy School Challenge, we're looking not only to improve the quality of the meal, to improve the nutritional aspects of the meal, we want to see more nutrition education in the classrooms, as well as more physical education and physical activity. We also recognize that you need to start at the youngest ages. We also have, we also administer the child and adult care food program. Our child care programs in, in child care centers and family day care homes. Again, improving the nutritional quality of the meals that we serve there and providing more nutrition education and physical activity at the earliest levels. And we go beyond that because we are the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We are interested in farms. We're promoting farm to school activities. We're promoting school gardens. We want to see kids get involved in agriculture and in fruits and vegetables at an early age and keep that as a, life, a lifelong learning uh, habit. So I just want to thank uh, and congratulate uh, Mayor Prasant and all the partners in Keene because it takes a lot of partners to do what you're trying to do. And I know your goal is to be the healthiest community in the country. And based on what I've seen so far, you're well on, well on the way to becoming the healthiest town in the country. So again, congratulations. Thank you. And now to introduce a program that it's, it's great to see something in action. And I get to do it right from my own living room. I just look out the front window and see kids going to school. And it's an amazing program to watch and see implemented. We've heard a lot about it. And I'd like to welcome at this time, Councilor, City Councilor Kendall Lane representing the Safe Routes to School program. Thank you, Andy. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, thank you all for coming today. This is a very exciting day. And for me particularly, I've been involved in the program that's called the Safe Routes to Schools program for about three years now. And uh, it, it, to see, it all, see that program all come together and to see so many different activities involving youth, involving children, all come together, all designed to create a healthy lifestyle, a healthy food for eating program for 
young kids, because they're the ones that are going to make the, make the difference. By the time you get to my age, the damage is already done. Teach them young, and they, they will have healthy lifestyles for their entire life. The Safe Foods to Schools program has been around for five or six years. It's a, it's a program that's 100% federally funded. It's a reimbursement program to assist schools and, and the surrounding communities to encourage children from kindergarten through eighth grade to safely walk and ride bicycles to school, uh, preferably kids within a two mile radius of the schools. The program is intended for children uh, who live within that two mile radius to provide funding for infrastructure improvements but more importantly, for education, education for parents, education for teachers, education for the kids to, carry, carry, to encourage them to walk and to bike more safely to school. I'm going to share a little bit of my time up here with Patty Yerger, who, who actually is principal of one of the elementary schools in Keene uh, and has been very active in, in promoting the Safe Routes to Schools. But first, I'd like, let me make a few comments about it, and then, I'm, and then I'm going to ask her to deal with a few of the specifics as to what we've done. I first learned about the program when Rhett Lamb, who, who is the planning director for the city of Keene, and I attended a program put on by uh, John Corrigan uh, from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation uh, about the Safe Routes to Schools program. Uh, this was in 19, 2008, which was about the same time the city was also beginning to develop its new community master plan, one of the factors of which was to improve the walkability of, of the community. It was also at the same time that Pathways to Keene a, an organization, a local organization designed to improve bike paths within Keene uh, was expanding their outreach program and trying to extend their program to, to uh, younger kids. Uh, so it was very exciting that this program came along at the same time that this community was very fortuitous that at the same time this community was also working in a number of its own groups to, to en encourage the same types of activities. After, we'd heard the, after we heard the, uh, the details on, on the program, uh, we, we gave us some ideas on how we could perhaps uh, utilize federal funding to encourage at the local level the uh, walkability and the bikeability to schools. So we then met with the chairman of the school board and the superintendent of schools and we reviewed with them the program, reviewed to them what some of the possibilities were. Uh, they were also very excited about it because the school at that point was also involved in a walking program in their elementary schools to encourage the elementary school kids to walk during, during the classroom day. And in fact, part of, the, part of the gym program the schools were doing was to encourage the kids to get out and walk when the, when the weather permitted it. So it all came together. It's one of the unique things about this community, about Keene. When we see problems, amazing the number of groups that form, the number of people that form to try to deal with the problems. And that's just what was happening here. A number of different groups within the community were forming, and the Safe Routes to Schools program, which provided some federal funding, brought all of those groups together to, to try, try to find some solutions. The mayor appointed a committee from all the different interested groups, and we, then, we got together, and, the, and our first step was to select a school. We actually selected Jonathan Daniels, which is an elementary school uh, right next to where the new middle school is currently being constructed. But at the time that we had done it, at the time that we had chosen Jonathan Daniels, we didn't know that the middle school was going to, was going to be located there. Uh, and then we we developed a program internally within the committee to how would we, number one, educate, educate kids, educate parents, and be able to take advantage of some of the infrastructure opportunities that this program op offered. Patty, would you come up for just a minute? And I'd like to introduce Patty Yerger, who is the principal of Jonathan Daniels School and also the chairman of the Keene Safe Routes to Schools Committee, 
to talk about some of the specific things that we've done at Jonathan Daniels. What, what was so interesting, Kendall talks about being inspired by a Department of Transportation meeting. However, what you may not know is that John came to Jonathan Daniels School the year before in 2007 um, when we talked about Actually, possibly, <laughs> we possibly talked about doing something from a school base and realized it needed to be a partnership. Um, so it's been great to get here. Um, in 2008, the, com the city started our committee began in 2009, and we've been busy, and we haven't stopped moving since, literally. Um, our first step was collecting parent data, and I'll read some of the things that we found from our parents that really made us believe that this was a good direction to move in. 62% of our students at that time that lived less than a quarter mile to school were driven. Less than a quarter mile. Um, we also realized that 46% of our parents had traffic concerns, which is why they did not let their students walk. Although the good news is 69% of parents thought that biking and walking was a healthy way to get to school, and 52% thought that it would be very fun to allow their kids to bike and walk to school. So we got some mixed information, um, and what we did with our data, and it's, this is all structured through the Safe Routes to School National Center, we used the information that was out there, um, we applied for a startup grant, and then we used that startup money um, to hire some interns, do the, the surveys. We were lucky then to be able to find um, an engineering firm um, from Vermont that helped us look at kind of our roads, our sidewalks, our pathways to school, what was safe, what could be safer, and some ideas for improvement. Um, we worked well with them to be able to um, develop what they call a travel plan, which looks at that two-mile radius to and from school. Um, and most recently, um, just in January, we've applied for an infrastructure grant, which will hopefully um, will receive and be able to do some roadway improvements, some signage improvements, um, some markings for, we don't have sidewalks in the neighborhood across from our school, but we looked at doing some markings on the road to allow for more bike pathways and to be able to work with what we have. We also looked for some traffic calming ideas for Maple Avenue, which the school is on. Um, although that speeding speed limit sign flashes 20 in a school zone, I can tell you the figures that are alarming of how few people travel 20 miles an hour during the school zone. Um, so we're hoping to do a lot of things that will help make their routes to school um, safer than they are. We're also excited because um, from the committee standpoint, we figured Jonathan Daniels was just school number one. So starting um, hopefully this Friday at Simon School, they will be um, releasing the parent survey, which is now online, getting some parent data um, from the parents at Simon School and start to look at a different two-mile radius in Keene and seeing how we can improve the safety of how students get to school. The other big thing we've been doing, and I know other schools do this, is the whole promotion of physical well-being and exercise, and we have walk to school days. The staff goes out in the neighborhood and meets students at different corners and walks to school. We bike ride to school with students. Um, we also do a walking club during the school day where the kids um, earn tokens um, for all their miles they walk, um, and we're trying to be able to have fun, um, but also promote a safe walk to school. Thank you. Th th thank you, Patty. And in conclusion, I just want to say, right now we, we have the application. It's been, a, been approved at the local level, and it's currently at the state level. Uh, it just got submitted this past week. And we're hopeful that uh, that application will be approved so that we can go forward this year with, with the infrastructure improvements. But this has been a tremendous program. A lot of different groups have been able to participate in it. A lot of different things going on within the community have all come together at once to support this. And we look forward to its continued success throughout the community. Thank you very much. See, Jonathan Daniels did it. Now Simons wants to do it. It can, it can be uh, can, healthy, can be contagious, so it's a good thing. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, please welcome from our United States Senator Shaheen's office, Laura Samoes.
I'm not even going to bother to stand behind the podium. <laughs> I'm here to present a letter from Senator Shaheen, who's sorry she can't join us today. Dear friends, thank you for inviting me to the Department of Health and Human Services Let's Move event today. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person, but I'd like to join U.S. Health and Human Services Director Christy Hager, Mayor Dale Pregent, and everyone gathered today in support of this very important activity. As you know, First Lady Michelle Obama launched the Let's Move campaign in an effort to prevent childhood obesity and promote a more active, healthy lifestyle. New Hampshire families, schools, and communities have always been committed to improving our quality of life, and I know that the city of Keene is very proud to represent those efforts today. It will now be known nationally that Keene, a small city in western New Hampshire, has set its goal on becoming the healthiest community in America by 2020. The citizens of this area took a look at the data and found that our state's leading cause of death is heart disease related to tobacco use, poor diet, and physical inactivity. You realize that we spend a disproportionately high amount of money on medical care and the costs included um, instead of focusing on prevention and wellness initiatives. So, the citizens of Keene took, it, took action. Led by Cheshire Medical Center and Dartmouth-Hitchcock, you established a coalition of partners from all sectors of the community, including education, private business, nonprofit organizations, and municipal and state government. This coalition has made its priority to engage citizens in healthy lifestyles. I have no doubt that Keene will achieve its goals. And I have no doubt that the preventive measures which your citizens have become engaged in will lower health care costs well into the future. We should all applaud this sort of community-wide commitment to prevention, wellness, and public health. Across our state, initiatives like Early Sprouts, the Catch Kids Club, Safe Routes to School, Heal Healthy, act, uh, healthy Eating and Active Living, Walk New Hampshire, the Foundation for Healthy Communities, the H&H &H Foundation, the Endowment for Health, the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, and so many others at the federal, state, and local level are making New Hampshire a better place to live and to raise a family. Today's event is a signal to our young people that we are committed to improving their futures. As your United States Senator, I will do all that I can to support your efforts. Sincerely, Jean Shaheen. Thank you, Laura. Now at this time, I'd just like to talk, take a few moments uh, to talk about the program, which I'm very uh, fond of, which is the CATCH program. Uh, the CATCH Kids Club stands for uh, CATCH's Coordinated Approach to Child Health. And the philosophy of CATCH really translates to more than an after-school program. It improves the quality of life for everyone involved. The program teaches us to communicate better, live healthier, and be more active and have fun. Emphasis on fun. The catch lays a foundation for a healthier lifestyle. Now, I think it's all important that we want to be active. We increase our activity, increase productivity, increase confidence, better relationship, and we give more to others when we're healthier. So the four components of catch, and they're going to be demonstrated here in a few minutes from our uh, the kids in our program. But catch is fun. We stress this all the time to the, the children. We want to increase their physical activity, and we want them to have an opportunity to participate, practice, and play. And most importantly, we want to have them take this lifestyle home so they can practice it in their home environment. At so, this time, please help me welcome a man with a perfect vision for Keene, the Chief Administrative Officer for Cheshire Medical Center, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Keene, Art Nichols. <laughs> Thank you, Andy, and, and uh, uh, welcome, everybody. It's great to be here. Okay, it's great to be here. Uh, pleasure to be here, and I realize I'm the only thing standing between everybody in the parking lot, I think, so I, I was uh, 
honored to get the anchor position here today. But just a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, this has been a great turnout, and I, I really want to thank the, um, the CMS Region 1 Director, Christy Hager, for coming to Keene and acknowledging the, um, the efforts underway here in Keene and Cheshire County to fight childhood obesity. Uh, clearly, uh, the First Lady's Let's Move program fits extremely well with Vision 2020 that's been, been mentioned already today. And I, I have to say that we at Cheshire Medical Center, Dartmouth Hitchcock Keene, know that in order for Vision 2020 to be successful, uh, it has to be adopted person by person, you know, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, wherever we live, work, learn, or play. And, and Vision 2020, uh, it's, uh, I'll say it's an ambitious attempt to change the culture that surrounds personal health care and how we take responsibility for our own health. And each of us needs to understand individually uh, how, how we can affect our own health more than any other factor in our lives. And clearly, increasing the amount of exercise and improving our nutrition are steps that we can all take on our own to improve our health status. I, I'd like to also acknowledge uh, Mayor Dale Pregent, Andy Bohannon, City of Keene, the city councilors that were here, I'm not sure if Kendall's still here, but uh, their commitment to review and improve upon our infrastructure to make it easier for our citizens to walk, uh, bike to work, shop, or play. Many of you will remember the Vision 2020 Summit that we held in May at Keene State College uh, last year and how eloquently our friend Mark Fenton uh, underscored the importance of local infrastructure and the positive impact that can have on our lives and, and really give us the opportunity to change the behaviors that, that maybe aren't so healthy. I, I wanted to mention that uh, Mark Fenton, who is a great fan of, of Vision 2020, is coming back to Keene this year, March, or excuse me, May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and he will be holding several different workshops that I think will be of interest to uh, a large cross-section of the community. I'd like to close my remarks by just uh, issuing a couple of challenges for everyone here, uh, for both the younger folks, and I think perhaps the ones that are here today don't need much of a challenge, a uh, great job, uh, but also uh, for, for any of us at any point in our lives. Uh, first of all, check out uh, the Let's Move website that was mentioned earlier, uh, letsmove.gov. I have checked it out. It's a great way, whether you're in the classroom or at home in your, in, your, in your family setting, to really begin talking about how can we change some of our habits. Uh, second, I would challenge you to become a Vision 2020 champion if you're not already. Our goal is to have more than 500 Vision 2020 champions by the end of the year, and I believe uh, we're already more than halfway there. This gives me an opportunity to recognize our own uh, Vision 2020 champions. I see a couple here, Yvonne Goldsberry, Dr. Rudy Fedrizi, and Linda Rubin. Linda, you, there's Linda over here. Um, they, uh, they are the folks that are leading the charge for us, and, and we're real pleased to have them on board. And finally, uh, most of all, I'd like to challenge each of you, no matter what stage of life you're in, and if, Ken, if Kendall's still here, I was going to challenge him. I've got a book for him called Younger, Younger Next Year. Uh, that we can sign them up for. But no matter what stage of life you're in, uh, you have the opportunity to really take control, make a difference in your life, and improve your health. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Christy, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, it's been a great day. Thank you. Hello, I'm here with Andy Bohannon and... Beth Corwin from Simon School. And so we've had a wrap-up of a long day, exciting day. So what do you think about it, Andy? I think it was very exciting to see so many community partners come together and share their experiences and celebrate the Let's Move uh, initiative. And it's what Keen's all about. And you're pushing for safe pathways to school for Simon? Definitely safe routes to school and also comprehensive school wellness in all of our schools where we're really partnering with community um, entities and organizations like the City of Keene and the Rec Department here to um, provide multiple opportunities for our kids to be active and healthy and grow up to be productive contributing citizens. And all the research shows healthier kids are smarter kids. That's right, we know it's true. <laughs> And okay, I want to thank you and again, congratulations. And thank you. Good success on your pathways to school, safe thank pathway you to schools. Thank, thank you. you.